how I made my photo of the Bass Harbor Lighthouse on NP3. Hi there, welcome to the National Parks Photography Program. And today I'm gonna to walk you through how I made my photo of the Bass Harbor Lighthouse at Acadia National Park. Uh, Bass Harbor Lighthouse is located at the southern tip of Mount Desert Island in Maine in Acadia National Park. Uh, it's just this iconic, uh, beautiful lighthouse. It's kind of built onto the, right on the edge of the cliffs. Um, and uh, being on the southern tip, it gives it exposure uh, both east and west. So, you know, sunrise, sunset, either time is a really good time to, to visit and make a, a just, well, okay, first of all, it's a great time to experience. Uh, it is just, you know, with the waves crashing ashore and this rugged uh, coastline and the lighthouse and all these elements come together and just as an experience to just sit there and watch the sunrise um, or even midday to spend this some time at this location is just, you know, an amazing experience. And then as a photographer, it's just, you know, everything that you would want to make a really memorable photograph uh, is going to come into play here. Uh, the lighthouse itself is sort of the feature. Uh, it was built in 1858 and um, it continues to serve. It was manned until 1974 and then since then you know there's an automated beacon there. Um, it's just over 30 feet tall so it's about the height of a three-story building uh, to the top of the lighthouse. So it's you know it's as some lighthouses go it's not it's not giant but it's really its location right on the edge of this cliff that makes it so spectacular. Um, there's a couple of sort of opposing factors to, to think about in several different areas when you're anticipating uh, uh, visiting it and photographing it. One is uh, east versus west uh, view of the, the lighthouse. So um, Bass Harbor is, again, it's the southernmost point of Mount Desert Island, and it's it's the other side of the park from, from where Bar Harbor is. So Bar Harbor, if you're visiting Acadia, and if you're wanting to know more about Acadia, I, I do have a video posted that I'll, I'll link to with my overview of the park. But in short, Bar Harbor is kind of in the north, uh, you know, up in the northeast uh, side of the park and is the main town in the area. And so uh, the park kind of forms this upside down U shape and there's a fjord coming up in the middle and so to get from bar harbor over to bass harbor you have to kind of drive around this it takes maybe 40 minutes um to get there and then you know off of the main highway there's a a, a spur road that goes about a mile into uh, where the lighthouse is and you can park right there and so from the lighthouse you can either well you can go right to the lighthouse and look out over the coast there and and see that but then if you want a view of the lighthouse the main trail kind of heads around to the east whereas the uh, uh, there's a there's another way to kind of more towards the west that you can work your way down to the coast too so you can either uh, be east looking towards the the west so away from the rising sun towards the setting sun um, or vice versa so you know it's worth visiting and looking at those different perspectives and getting a feel for which one uh, that you're going to like better. I think sort of the iconic uh, image of the lighthouse is at sunset uh, east of the lighthouse looking back west, but it's not one I took mine exactly and, and, uh, and you know, any way is going to provide you with great opportunities. And that brings to the second uh, decision to make and that is sunrise or sunset so um, based on you know the, the composition that you like best and you know what your schedule looks like you can do a really good job making great photos at either of those times and then there's also high tide and low tide and some of that might be dictated to you uh, based upon uh, you know when you visit and you know what timing works for you but again you can you can look at charts for this ahead of time and it makes a really big difference what that that seascape looks like, uh, whether the tide is in or out. Um, so those are sort of three things that you'll want to, you know, plan, you know, visit the site if you have, if you're just arriving early or if you make a earlier visit to the site. Um, 
those are sort of three factors that are really going to be a critical, play a critical role in how you set up your image of, of the Bass Harbor Light. For my shot then, I was uh, uh, from the eastern viewpoint looking west. I was there at dawn and it was at high tide and the, the tide was just sort of, uh, that was the day I was able to get there. So I didn't really have a choice in the matter. Uh, you'd have to wait a few days if you wanted to be at, at the same spot at the same time, but low tide. Um, but it was, a, it was a time that I think really worked, worked well for me. And so what I did was the, you know, sort of midday the day before, I went out to uh, the location and, and scouted it. And it's the very popular, especially that, that viewpoint is very, such an iconic place. It's very popular. So I anticipated that there were probably going to be other photographers there. And plus you just have these few key moments um, in terms of the light. So I wanted to really plan out um, which angle uh, was going to be the one that I wanted to shoot, keeping in mind that even though the tide was more out when I was scouting the location, that it was going to be up when I came back at dawn for, for my actual photograph. And so, you know, I was looking for angles, but specifically I was looking for foregrounds and areas of rock that I thought made for a engaging foreground that would help draw you into the, into the photo. So I shot, you know, a bunch of different angles. And even though the light was poor, it was kind of overcast and, and flat, it was a great time to just think about composition and do some tests and then be able to go back to the bed and breakfast overnight and review those images on the, the screen and the camera and get a feel for which one I like best and which one I anticipated was going to work best the, the next morning. Then having scouted the location, I went back the next morning. My wife and I went out there. And indeed, uh, again, if you saw my Acadia overview video, you'll know we were there during the government shutdown. So instead of being able to drive right up, we had to walk about a mile down the road to get there. So that probably reduced the number of other photographers that were there. But there were a couple there at the time. And so then you have to get into, uh, I don't have any more right to that spot than they do. And so um, it's it's sort of the, you know, you, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar kind of a thing. You, If you're nice, and, and respectful, uh, I mean, you might get run into some other photographer who's being a real pain, but generally, if you, if you work with these people, instead of working against them, um, you'll have a lot better odds of, of having a good experience and be able to get to the location you want. And so these guys had spots, you know, uh, uh, scouted out, and they had tripods set up and were shooting. And so I kind of hung back for a little bit and tested some things out and did some shots that were actually a pretty nice angle but wasn't quite what I wanted and then I saw they were kind of stepping back for a minute just to enjoy the scene and so I asked them okay do you mind if I step forward into what might have been in their shot and make a couple of images a little far for, farther forward and they absolutely no problem so you know I walked up to this location I had scouted the day before and what made it so great was with the tide up, you had these waves come crashing right in just below me um, onto the, the cliffs. And, the you know, so you see the, the sky is a beautiful color and the, the lighthouse is, is positioned where I want it in the frame. And then so I'm, you know, thinking about this moving water and, uh, and how best to, to, to capture that. And, what I decided was there's two factors I was going to try to time for. One was the uh, the light on the lighthouse would kind of you know turn on and off, as lighthouses do. It turns on and off. It has a red light uh, beacon light in there. So you know I wanted to try to catch that uh, when it was on because it would just be that extra little element that would be nice. And then while that was on, trying to catch. Uh, just as one of the waves crashed into the shore. And I was shooting about uh, a quarter second exposure because I wanted to get just that little bit of movement in the image. And so um, well, it probably wasn't even a quarter of a second. I'd have to go look it up. It was probably more like an eighth of a second or a sixteenth of a second, but long enough that I wasn't freezing the water. I was getting, you know, some blur in there. And then I was shooting, you know, a few frames, like maybe three frames a second so that I could catch the wave, you know, while this light was on, I could catch the wave at different points 
as it crashed ashore. And then that, when I got back to review the images, would give me some options to try to pick the one that I thought was best. Now, I'm always trying to hit that first shot. Um, instead of starting that sequence of photos, you know, three frames a second, um, ahead and just hoping for the best result. My goal is usually to try to time the first one of the sequence to just when I think the best moment is going to be then a shoot a few afterwards because why not? Um, I, I do think you want to be intentional about when you're, you're opening that shutter because uh, a third of a second is long enough that you might miss the best moment in between uh, a couple of frames and the exposure was long enough that I couldn't shoot, you know, like 10 frames a second and, and you know, really sort of make sure I get what I want. So, so that was sort of my technique. Time for the first one, grab a couple of images, um, carrying on from that and uh, try to get that water how I want it again with, with the lighthouse on. I was also shooting this um, sort of just before sunrise. So I don't have any direct light. I don't have any direct light on the rocks or the lighthouse quite yet, but I do like that pre-dawn light. It's, it's a little more even and it's, um, uh, because it's more even, you, you usually can be sure that you're going to get all of the, the value areas, uh, represented in the image. And then the sky is still a little dimmer, so you get that that nice uh, uh, colored sky. In this case, it's kind of a purpley pinkish sky that was you know away from the sun, um, and that that was really a uh, uh, color I liked and something I thought would add add nicely to the image. So uh, and then finally, the other consideration was I wanted to get uh, a good angle of of the rocks in the foregrounds, and I wanted to have those rocks. Uh, right up close to, um, you know, so you were right down on that texture is just a beautiful texture. And so, you know, I wanted to feature that in the final image. So I had my tripod, lo tripod lowered all the way down. I was, had it positioned right at the very edge of the cliffs. In fact, uh, I had to keep a hand on it because if I had let go of the tripod, it would have fallen off the cliff into the ocean. I had kind of the, the neck strap wrapped around my wrist. So if I slipped, I wouldn't I wouldn't lose the camera, but um, it was stable enough that I was able to have a hand, hand on it and not, not shake. I was using the cable release to open the shutter, control the shutter. So, you know, that was kind of my setup. Low, uh, uh, fairly uh, closed aperture because I needed the depth of field, everything from, you know, just over a foot out to infinity, which is pretty hard to get. And, and when I go through the post-processing of the image, you'll see I had to cut off uh, crop out the bottom of the image because that was just it was just a little too close to be able to get all of it um, sharply in focus but I think one of the things that makes it uh, a photo I'm really happy with is you see both this sort of minute detail in the texture of the rocks and it gives it you know a real nice gritty look in the foreground and then all the way back to the horizon and the peaceful uh, colors and of the horizon. So, so that's sort of the setup of the shot. And now we will go um, to the computer and I'll talk about uh, some of the post-processing I did to take this sort of flat um, pre-dawn image and then, you know, give it some pop and turn it into the final image. So I'm here at the computer and I've got the original image pulled up and we'll start taking a look at some of the changes I made to turn the image from the raw file into the finished product. So, looking at this, as you see, it's a pretty flat image, um, especially the sky and the water is pretty washed out. Um, the exposure for the, the rocks and the trees is more uh, right on, but even in the fairly even pre-dawn light, um, the, it was still a fairly uh, wide range of, of tones, so I kind of had to uh, uh, expose so that I'd have detail captured in, in the, the highlights and the shadows that I could convert into something. Um, you'll also see along the bottom of the image here, kind of under that line, that uh, that area is really close and I'm going to go ahead and crop that out. And the reason is um, the camera was like only a foot off the, the rocks and so the depth of field even stopped way down wasn't great enough to capture uh, clear detail both in that very foreground area and in the um, back to infinity, back to the, the horizon. 
One other thing you'll note is right in the uh, near the horizon there, there's two people in the image. And I'm not usually about uh, making big alterations in Photoshop and taking things out and putting things back in. But in this case, I did go in and remove those, those two people, plus sort of just like a baseline um, curves adjustment to get the, the sky dark and uh, the, the rocks a little more contrast into the, the foreground. So a little bit of an HDR kind of effect that I applied um, just using some curves adjustments to take care of that, which brings us to the Photoshop file and here it is. So you can see already just at the crop and some curves adjustments, there's a lot more detail in the sky and in the water and the rocks jump out a little more. So again, here is the before on that and I can get rid of those red lines. The before the crop and the adjustment and after. So already a really big difference. Moving on from there, um, then it was just sort of building up curves. So first, you know, trying to pull a little more detail out of the trees um, and trying to adjust uh, some, some colors. So again, it's a little more vibrant. And then the other thing you'll see before this set of adjustments is if you look at the waves in the water down here, they have a little bit of a greenish hue to them that I don't remember from being there and wasn't what I wanted. So I applied a gradient mask to those areas, which just selects, so you kind of select what your dark color is and it runs from kind of a, a more of a, a deep bluish to a white um, and makes those waves look a lot better. So I'll click that up, adjustment back on and so you can see uh, more vibrant and more spot on colors to how I remember the scene. Another problem area that I had to deal with, and this is from that first uh, way I applied some curves, is right along in where the trees uh, met the sky that there was an issue with uh, just some some uh, halos, some light halos around the trees. So I just did a couple of uh, um, empty layers and filled those areas in uh, using a darken uh, um, screen so that Anything that was already dark wasn't going to get any darker, but uh, I could kind of take the color from the clouds in the area and just uh, paste that in um, using the clone tool. I can draw, fill that in over where those trees are, and it removes that halo without darkening in. It's only making things darker, so if the trees are already so much darker, it's not going to affect those. So a small detail there. Um, one big swing, finally brightening up the um, the rocks in the foreground. Um, a uh, set of adjustments to make the sky and the colors there uh, a little more vibrant. And then just some final, again, color contrast, uh, little vignette uh, adjustments. And that was all I did with this. Now it's a lot of steps but um, not, nothing was like super overly complicated or anything like that. If I turn those adjustments off, you can see the before and it's a lot flatter image and the after is a lot more vibrant. And then especially if I go all the way back, here's the original image. Um, there's a good image, there's a good exposure for capturing all of the detail in the image and being prepared to do post-processing, but it wasn't quite there. And the image after, um, this is what I wanted. This is how I remember the scene and um, an image I'm very happy with. All right, so you've seen how I was able to use the computer to uh, turn this image from, again, sort of that flat raw file into, you know, a really sort of rich colored uh, uh, finished print. And, you know, your eyes tend to adjust uh, on both extremes. If you're, if you're out in nature and it is that, you know, very even pre-dawn light, your eye uh, tends to, you know, see the color and the contrast in there that the camera, you know, maybe will flatten out too much. And then at the other end, some situations, you know, if I had shot the same image at dusk where the sun was setting, um, you'd have this super high contrast. And again, in those situations, you know, your eye sees the, the, the detail and everything, even if it would be, you know, blown highlighter 
blocked shadow in those images. So you know you want to use the the tools at hand to sort of uh, either compress those uh, values or or expand them to you know make a pleasing image, but make it really represent what it was you saw when you were at a location like this because it's hard to we well, can't do these places justice but we're trying to do the best we can to tell the stories of of these amazing places we've visited and that's how i made uh this image of acadia national park both uh you know really thinking hard scouting the location thinking about composition thinking about the dynamic elements of the scene and how i wanted to incorporate those and then taking that file and, and using the tools in, in Photoshop to um, to make the image how how I how I rem in line with my memory of it. So uh, uh, as you've seen on the screen, and I'll hold up here, you know the final print is right here of this image. And again, it's it's one that I love having in my my art booth at my shows. And um, you know it's it's one people stop and and take a look at an image that I'm really really proud of. Uh, it, it sort of tells the story of that place as I, as I saw it. So, you know, always, you know, to me, this is, uh, you know, having the print uh, as nice as it is to look at images on the screen and to, you could share them on Facebook and I, I do too. But, you know, um, making these prints of the images and, you know, being able to give them to people or if I'm lucky, you know, having people buy them, it's, it's always such an honor. And, um, but then to have them, you know, this print, actually this big one that's behind me right here is one that's on the wall in my house. And, you know, we look at every day and we remember our honeymoon and we remember um, what, you know, being at Bass Harbor at dawn was like and what an amazing experience it was. So, so I hope that, you know, seeing how I did this was interesting to you and that you give this uh, video a like. Next time we're going to be uh, talking about gear just a little bit. I have some uh, bags that I've, I have two different bags uh, from Damka that um, have sort of become my go-to camera bags. And, you know, I've been through a few different things and experimented, and, and these are ones that I, I really like. And uh, you don't see around all the time, so I'm not uncommon, but something a little different, and I think they're just amazing. So I'm going to talk about, about those bags just a little bit. If you want to see that video or other videos like this one or about national parks and photography, um, subscribe to this channel. If you've been to Bass Harbor and you have any uh, other thoughts or tips that I've left out, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.